Hi, fourth graders. Welcome back to Miss Nichols' classroom. So glad that you could join me again for another Making Meaning lesson. Uh, we still have Panther and Blake and Caicos and Simba the Little Bunny who are here as my students. I hope that you are getting a chance to visit with your classmates and your teacher online and continue with, continuing uh, with your studies. We sure miss all of our students, but glad you are here. Let's get started. For our lesson today, you're gonna need a few materials. If you have a district packet, uh, that's great. If not, a piece of paper will do. You'll need a pencil or pen, something to write with, and someone to share your thoughts with. So a turn and talk partner. As we have been talking about in the past, you don't have your classmates with you at home. So a turn and talk partner can be someone in your family, maybe uh, an older or younger sibling. You could be talking on the phone to a friend. Maybe you're watching the same lesson. Maybe you are sharing your ideas with your pet, maybe a pretend friend or even a pretend conversation with a, your favorite celebrity. Whoever you choose as your turn and talk partner, please make sure that you're using the language that is most comfortable for you at home. If you were with us on our last lesson, you'll remember that we spent a great deal of time collecting the important ideas in the story, The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. And we remember that this is an important skill for us to be able to summarize a text, to be able to make sense of what we are reading and to help us grow as readers. So today we're going to spend some time looking through these important ideas that we have built together on our chart. And we are going to build a summary together of this text. Let's get started. For those of you that have been following along in our lessons, you'll recognize this summary of a picture book of Amelia Earhart. We're gonna take a look at it again today to help us think about what are some of the important parts that we need to include in a summary. And we'll think about those as we start to build our summary of the boy who harnessed the wind. I'm gonna go ahead and read this summary to you out loud. I believe there is a copy of it in your packet if you'd like to read along as well. And I want you to be thinking about what are the components or the information in this summary. All right, here we go. Summary of a picture book of Amelia Earhart. A picture book of Amelia Earhart by David A. Adler tells the life story of the famous pilot Amelia Earhart. Amelia was born in Kansas in 1897. She wasn't like other girls. She played sports, made her own roller coaster, and wore pants. Amelia wasn't interested in airplanes when she was little, but that changed when she grew up. In 1920, she went for her first plane ride and decided she wanted to fly. In 1932, she became the first woman to fly alone across the Atlantic Ocean. Amelia tried to fly around the world in 1937, but her plane disappeared in the Pacific Ocean. She was never found. Today, she is remembered for her courage and for providing and for proving that women can meet the same challenge as men. What do you notice in the summary of a picture book of Amelia Earhart that could serve as a model for us as we think about building our summary of The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind? I want you to think about that as you look at the summary and go ahead and share your thoughts with a partner. What do you notice in the summary of a picture book of Amelia Earhart that might serve as a model when we go to summarize the boy who harnessed the wind. Why don't you think about that for just a moment and go ahead and share your thoughts with your partner. So what were some of your thoughts? I'm wondering if you were thinking some of the same things that I was. I was looking at that first sentence that tells us about the title, the author, 
and then goes on to tell us just some general statement about um, about this book and who it was about. And one of the other things that you may have noticed is that the story has a beginning, a middle, and an end, and resembles her story through her life, and that it also doesn't include everything that we talked about in the important ideas. What other thoughts did you have? Okay, now it's our turn to build a summary of the boy who harnessed the wind. As we began, let's think back to the model that we had for a picture book of Amelia Earhart. We remembered that that first sentence included both the book title and the author and a general sense of what the story was about. So let's try this. The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind by William Kwamba and Brian Mueller is a true story about a boy from Malawi who saves his village from starving. Okay, let's refer to our chart uh, that includes all the important parts that we need for our summary. We've included our book title and author in that first sentence, and we've also given a general statement about what the story is about. Let's take a look at what we need to include next so that we can summarize The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. We know that the book title and author and the general statement, now what's needed are the important details in chronological or order in which they happen in the story. So let's take a look at the important ideas chart that we have here to help us uh, be reminded of the important ideas. William's village had no money for lights we also noted that at night, he loved to dream about building things and taking them apart and figuring out how things worked. That during the daytime, he wondered about trucks and engines and what made them go. And that the people of Malawi began to starve because there wasn't enough rain to grow crops or food. We also noted that William's family had only enough food for one meal a day and that that was important. We also uh, made note that he had to quit school because the family didn't have enough money. And in his spare time, he went to the library to learn about uh, a windmill and how it could produce electricity and pump water. That was one of the books that he read and became interested about. William began to dream about how uh, he could use all of these resources to help his family and his village. Then William began collecting pieces of junk and all kinds of scrap metal and anything that he could that would help him to build a windmill. People thought he was kind of crazy for doing that, collecting all that junk. And then finally, his cousin Jeffrey and best friend Gilbert decided they were going to help him build the windmill. And finally, William built a windmill uh, that created electricity for his village. And then he began dreaming about building another windmill and how he could feed the people of Malawi. So now it is your turn. And in your packet or on a piece of paper, you're going to go ahead and write that sentence, that first sentence that we started with. And you're going to spend some time looking over that list and deciding which important ideas you would like to include in the summary. Remember, one of the things that we talked about is that summaries don't, summaries don't always include every important detail that we noted, and that sometimes we might be able to combine some of those ideas into one sentence. They might go together well enough that we can just create one sentence with a couple of ideas. Okay, Let's go ahead and pause and give yourself some time to write, and then we'll come back and talk about our summaries together. Okay, welcome back. How did you do with your summary? Let's take a look at some of the important ideas that you may have included in your summary, and we'll go ahead and add that to our page. In looking over our list of important ideas, one of the things that came to mind to talk about next 
is that when William was a boy, he was fascinated with trucks and moving things. And another thing that came up in the story is that he spent not only his nights, but his days wondering and dreaming about how machines worked. When I was looking at the list of important ideas, one of the ideas that I haven't included yet in the summary is this idea that Williams Village had no money for lights. I really wasn't sure how to start the summary with that as one of the main things, but I do think it is important and it made some sense to me that we might want to combine that with the idea that Williams Village, not only did they not have money for lights, but the idea that their crops were beginning to dry up because they didn't have enough water. And so thought that we could put those together in, a, in the same sentence. Williams Village has no money for lights and the maize crops were beginning to dry up because they didn't have enough water. One of the next things on our list is this idea that William's family didn't have enough money for him to continue to go to school and that when he wasn't at school, he spent a lot of time at the library researching and learning. He really wanted to be in school. And so let's think about how we might be able to put those two ideas together in a sentence. His family doesn't have enough money to, con con to continue to send him to school. So William begins going to the library and learns about how windmills can create electricity and pump water. I think that sentence really helps to combine those, those ideas. So let's look down at our chart next and see what we have that we haven't used yet. We haven't talked about this idea that William began collecting pieces of junk uh, to build the windmill and that the villagers thought he was kind of crazy for doing so. And we also have this idea that's closely connected that eventually his cousin Jeffrey and his best friend Gilbert decide to help him build the windmill. And I'm wondering if those two ideas can be put together in a sentence that captures both of those important ideas. Let's try this sentence. With scraps of metal and junk and the help of his cousin and best friend, William creates a windmill. All right, looking at our important ideas chart, it looks like we are almost to the end of our story and our summary. Looking back, it looks like we've got most everything but the idea that with the help of his cousin and his friend, he did build the windmill, and but that it did provide electricity. And in many ways, this idea that William kind of became a hero in his village. Let's try this sentence. The windmill provides electricity and William becomes the hero of his village. Well, there we have the summary of the boy who harnessed the wind. I'm wondering if your summary looks similar to this and had some of the same important ideas. Maybe you had something different and that's okay. The important thing to think about is do we have the most important parts? The book title and author, a general statement in that first sentence of what the story is about, and important ideas in chronological order. And it's okay if we didn't combine sentences the same way. Um, maybe we decided to say things in just a slightly different way. That's all right. And also to remember that maybe you didn't include every single important idea on the list. And that for a summary, it's okay that not all of them are included all the time. That was some good reading and thinking today, but now it's time for IDR, Independent Daily Reading. Today, when you head off to IDR, you're going to need a just right book. You're going to read for at least 30 minutes. And again, you're going to be practicing that important skill 
um, and strategy of stopping occasionally and really thinking about the important ideas in the text that you're reading at home, you're also going to complete a journal entry. The journal entry prompt is here. It's also in your packet at home. For those of you who remember, I was reading for my IDR book last time, Baseball in April by Gary Soto. And we heard from the reading on the first day that Michael and Jesse, two brothers, were excited and a little nervous about trying out this year for the Little League team and that it had been this was going to be their their year and it had been three years in a row that they had tried out. So I'm going to model a little bit for you today from my IDR book of how it is that we practice this strategy of really thinking about what's most important in in the books that we're reading. Here we go. When they reached Romaine Playfield the next day, there were hundreds of kids divided into lines by age group 9, 10, and 11. Michael and Jesse stood in line, gloves hanging limp from their hands, and waited to have their large paper number pinned on their backs so that the field coaches would know who they were. Jesse chewed his palm as he moved up in line. When his number was called, he ran out onto the field to the sound of his black sneakers smacking against the clay. He looked at the kids still in line, then at Michael, who yelled, you can do it. The first grounder, a three bouncer, spun off his glove into center field. Another grounder cracked off the bat and he scooped it up, but the ball rolled off his glove. Jesse stared at it before he picked it up and hurled it at the first base. The next one he managed to pick up cleanly, but, this, but his throw made the first baseman leap into the air with an exaggerated grunt that made him look good. Three more balls were hit to Jesse and he came up with one. So I'm going to stop here. And what seems to be most important in this part of the story is that Jesse got nervous, maybe, and he didn't do so well. He threw one way over the first baseman's head, made the first baseman look good, and he was able to scoop up a couple of balls, but but not all of them. And I think this is important because this was supposed to be his year. Okay, it's your turn now, and you're gonna go ahead and head off to IDR. Happy reading. If you're reading so much that you're running out of books at home, don't forget that there are some resources online for students through SPS website. You're gonna visit the SPS website, select the student family portals, and click on the academic tools, which will provide you icons and links to such resources such as Tumblebooks, Pebble Go, and Kids Read.